Antarctica is the most extreme place on Earth. It's a land where temperatures drop to below negative 80 degrees Celsius. That's negative 112 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds can gust over 300 kilometers per hour, and for months, the sun never rises. Yet, despite these deadly conditions, over 70 research stations have been built across this frozen continent. These are not just shelters. They are engineering marvels designed to withstand some of the harshest conditions imaginable. From modular stations that rise with the snow to bases powered entirely by renewable energy, each one is a testament to human ingenuity. How do engineers manage to build and maintain life-supporting research hubs in such a remote and hostile environment? Join us as we uncover the incredible stories behind these extreme Antarctic stations and the brilliant engineering that helps them survive. Why do we even try to build anything in Antarctica? It's the coldest, windiest, and most frozen place on Earth. Nothing about it seems friendly. So why are we there at all? Why do we keep building research stations in a land where most people wouldn't last a day? The answer is simple. Antarctica is one of the most important places on Earth for science. Its untouched land and ice hold secrets about our planet's past and clues about its future. Scientists go there to study climate change, rising sea levels, and even the history of Earth itself. These stations aren't only fancy buildings in the snow. They are vital tools. They help us understand how the world is changing and what might come next. But building anything in Antarctica isn't easy. In fact, it's one of the hardest things engineers have ever had to do. Why? Well, let's start with the ground. Much of Antarctica is covered in thick ice sheets, and these sheets aren't still. They move. In some places, they slide several meters every year. So imagine trying to build a house on a floor that's always shifting. That's the first big problem. Then there's the cold. We're not talking about a chilly winter day. We're talking about temperatures that can fall below minus 80 degrees Celsius. That's negative 112 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold enough to freeze metal, crack plastic, and shut down machines. And if that wasn't enough, the winds are strong enough to knock over heavy equipment. In some areas, they blow faster than 300 kilometers per hour. That's like standing behind a jet engine. So, how do you build in a place like that? You have to be smart. Engineers need to design stations that can handle ice that moves, winds that roar, and cold that never quits. Remember, Antarctica doesn't have stores, roads, or easy ways to get help. Every tool, every piece of equipment, and every plan has to be perfect. There's no room for mistakes. But building in Antarctica comes with another huge challenge, logistics. How do you move materials to one of the most remote and frozen places on Earth? Here's the thing, the work can only happen during a short window of time. Only the summer months are warm enough to transport supplies and do construction before the long, freezing winter returns. That gives crews only a few weeks a year to get things done. So, how do they make it work? Everything from fuel to heavy tools must be planned perfectly. Supplies are flown in by large cargo planes or brought in by icebreaker ships. There are no roads, no nearby towns, and no quick help. These stations have to survive on their own for months, and if something breaks, it might not get fixed until the next summer. These problems sound impossible, but somehow engineers pull it off. So, how do they do it? Let's take a closer look. What if your building site was slowly drifting away? That's the problem the British faced on the Brunt ice shelf. The ice there moves and cracks all the time, making it dangerous for any structure to stay in one place. Their old station, Halley 5, was in trouble. So what did they do? They built something completely new, Halley 6, a station that can move. Yes, you heard that right. Halley 6 isn't only a research lab, it's a mobile machine. The British research station is built on giant skis and sits on legs that can rise up and down. That means when the snow piles up, the station lifts itself above it. And when the ice below starts to crack or shift, the whole station can be pulled to a safer spot. Each part of the station is a module, like a train car. They're connected, but can be separated and towed across the ice by tractors. The legs have hydraulic jacks that lift the station higher as needed, keeping it safe and level. It's like giving the building a set of robotic stilts. 
But what's it like inside? You might think it's cold and cramped, but it's actually pretty comfortable. The station is made with strong, insulated panels that keep the cold out. Even when it drops below minus 50 degrees Celsius, that's negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit, the people inside stay warm. There are cozy living quarters, science labs, a kitchen, and even places to relax after work. Why go through all this trouble? Because Halley 6 plays a big role in climate science. It's been key in studying the ozone hole, ice shelf movements, and the atmosphere. And thanks to its smart design, it can keep doing this work for years to come, even as the ice shelf shifts beneath it. Now let's head to the very bottom of the world, the geographic South Pole. What kind of station do you build in a place where the sun doesn't rise for six months and temperatures can freeze metal? Welcome to the Amundsen-Scott South Pole Station, one of the most isolated places on the planet. Situated on 2,850 meters of shifting ice, the station must be designed to survive in one of the harshest environments imaginable. So, how do you even build in a place like this? The station faces months of darkness during the long winter, and temperatures can drop to a bone freezing minus 60 degrees Celsius. That's minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. To keep it from being buried under heavy snow, engineers raised the building three meters off the ground. Without that, it could disappear in just a few months. But the snow isn't the only problem. Winds here can reach 200 kilometers per hour, so the station has a chamfered shape to help deflect the force. Power comes from diesel generators, and the waste heat is reused to melt snow into clean drinking water. There are solar panels too, providing up to 14% of energy in the summer. And yes, there's even a NASA-designed greenhouse that grows fresh food all year round. With space for 150 people in summer and 50 in winter, this station isn't just surviving, it's leading the way in polar research and space science. But the South Pole isn't the only place pushing human limits. Head deeper into the Antarctic Plateau and you'll find Concordia Station, a French-Italian base perched at 3,233 meters above sea level. Isolated and frozen, it's one of the harshest outposts on Earth. So how do people survive here? For nine months of the year, Concordia is completely cut off. No planes, no supplies, no way out. And with temperatures dropping to minus 80 degrees Celsius, that's minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not merely cold, it's dangerously cold. Still, this lonely station plays a huge role in science. It helps researchers study climate change, glaciers, and even space. What keeps it running in such extreme conditions? The station has two main towers that stand on hydraulic legs. These legs lift the buildings higher as the snow piles up. Inside, thick insulation keeps the heat in, and the compact layout makes everything easy to reach. Diesel generators provide power, and the heat they give off is used to melt snow for water. Concordia also helps space scientists. It mimics the harsh conditions astronauts face during long missions, making it a perfect place for the European Space Agency to test ideas for space travel. But what if a station could survive Antarctica without burning a single drop of fuel? That's exactly what Belgium set out to prove with the Princess Elizabeth Station, a research base that's breaking all the rules of polar living. Located in East Antarctica, this station is a groundbreaking example of sustainable design. It is the first zero emission research station powered entirely by renewable energy sources, wind and solar. So, how does it stay warm in such cold conditions? The station's design is both compact and highly insulated, with nine layers of materials, including aluminum, wood, and insulation to make sure no heat escapes. The construction of Princess Elizabeth was a remarkable feat. The station was pre-assembled in Belgium and then shipped to Antarctica, where it was put together again on site. The granite ridge where it sits made construction difficult, but in the end, the station now runs completely on wind turbines and solar panels. A smart energy control system balances power needs, making this one of the most energy efficient research stations on the continent. But what happens when cutting edge science meets tradition in one of the coldest places on Earth? That's the story of Jong Bogo Station, South Korea's second Antarctic research base. Sitting near the Ross Sea, 
This station is more than a science hub. It's a mix of modern design, national pride, and polar exploration. So, how does it stand up to such harsh conditions? The station's shape is low and aerodynamic, built to resist winds that often blow over 100 miles per hour. But the design isn't just about function. It's also inspired by traditional Korean architecture. The station is made of modular buildings that include living spaces, labs, and a central social area. Why modular? It allows for flexibility and keeps snow from piling up around the buildings. Inside, the station uses strong insulation and energy-saving systems to stay warm during even the coldest winters. But what about the environment? Zhang Bogo was built with eco-friendly features that help lower its carbon footprint. This station shows that even in the most extreme places on Earth, design and technology can come together in smart and meaningful ways. But South Korea isn't the only country thinking outside the box. India's Bharati Station in East Antarctica shows how simple ideas can make a big difference in tough environments. What's so special about it? It's built from shipping containers. Yes, the kind used for cargo. These containers were prefabricated in Germany and then shipped to Antarctica. In just 127 days, the entire station was put together during the short summer season. The containers sit on stilts, which help stop snow from piling up around them. This smart, modular design means the whole station can be taken apart and removed later, with very little impact on the environment. But how does it stay powered? Bharati Station uses a mix of solar panels and a diesel generator to keep everything running. It's not only about surviving in the cold, it's about doing science, too. The station supports important research in glaciology, geology, and space science. With Bharati, India has built more than just a research base. It's a clear step forward in the country's role in Antarctic exploration, showing that even shipping containers can help unlock the secrets of the frozen world. How do you build a station that doesn't get buried in snow? Germany's answer is Neumeyer Station 3, a high-tech base on the Ekstrom ice shelf and one of the most innovative in Antarctica. It stands on 16 hydraulic struts that allow it to lift itself as snow builds up. Why does that matter? Well, it keeps the station above the snow line, making it easier to maintain and built to last. So what's inside? Neumeyer is packed with labs, living quarters, and even a weather observatory that's been collecting data for over 30 years. It's like a mini science city on ice. The station runs on a mix of wind energy and diesel generators. The wind turbines handle most of the load, while diesel kicks in as a backup. And what kind of research happens here? A lot. Neumeyer is a key site for earth science, meteorology, and atmospheric research. It's one of Germany's most important contributions to Antarctic science, and it's built to endure some of the harshest winters on Earth. And what about Poland? As we wrap up our tour of Antarctica's most fascinating research bases, we arrive at our final stop on our list, the Henryk Arktowski Station, perched on King George Island. It's Poland's flagship base in Antarctica, and it recently got a major upgrade. The new design focuses on sustainability and strength, made to handle the wild Antarctic weather. What makes it so different? Well, the building now stands on stilts to stop snow from piling up around it. It also uses wind turbines for power, helping it stay energy efficient. Even with all the upgrades, it's still compact and smartly built. Inside, there are special areas for research, living, and relaxing. And when the winds hit 290 kilometers per hour, the station is built to handle it. There are even solar panels to add extra energy when the sun shines. What kind of science happens here? A wide range, oceanography, glaciers, and ecology. This station shows Poland's growing role in Antarctic research and its commitment to protecting the environment while doing big science. From sustainable energy solutions to innovative designs that rise above the snow, these Antarctic stations demonstrate the incredible feats of engineering required to survive in one of the harshest environments on Earth. As we continue to push the boundaries of science and exploration in the Antarctic, these bases serve as both lifelines and laboratories for vital research. Which of these engineering marvels impressed you the most? Drop a comment below and let us know.
And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more incredible stories from the edges of our world.